you know, Cropsey didn't really die. If Cropsey is a legend, uh, let, why, why can't we just say that when Cropsey burnt up, there was a little bit of protoplasm that was left over, you know, on the ground. And over time, this grew into another Cropsey. If I can't play the fool, then I'll play the ghoul, one or the other, you know? <laughs> I became interested in acting when I was 10 years old. I was sitting in a movie theater and I was watching Spencer Tracy, one of my idols. I was watching him play a judge and I believe the name of the movie, movie was Cass Timberlane. Now maybe I'm getting my movies mixed up, but I was entranced by the way that he was, he didn't seem to be acting, he was just listening to the other actors. And it seemed so easy, and he, he seemed to be so real that, and so likable at the same time, that I just wanted to jump up there into the screen with him, and that's, I think that's when I first got the bug. I'll tell you who made an impression on me, or what the impression was. Uh, this person was not in the film. This person was my son. Uh, my son, who had been born on August the 16th. And August the 17th was the day that I left him to come up to, uh, to film. And I tell you, my heart was, uh, my heart was with him. Uh, uh, I was, uh, I was torn. And to be, I watched him being born, not being born, but the nurse brought him out afterwards. Uh, and I looked down and he looked up at me and we bonded immediately, you know, he was looking at me like, who's this crazy dude from another planet, you know. He wasn't crying, he wasn't scared. We took him home and I put him in his little crib and said goodnight to him. And then I had to, the very next day, I had to uh, go up north and start killing people. <laughs> I wished during the shoot that we could have more backstory to Cropsey, but it was done quickly, and I had the feeling it was the budget wasn't what it could have been. Uh, Tom Savini worked his butt off and worked magic um, with the effects. Obviously, to this day, he's celebrated for it. But there's a five-year gap uh, between the time that Cropsey jumps into the lake and the next time we encounter Cropsey. And from that point on, he's all bad. At the beginning of the movie, it is, uh, uh, it's known that uh, Cropsey was a bad guy to begin with. Okay, he used to harass the, uh, the, the, uh, the campers, and they didn't like him. For what reason, it's not, it's not really explained. It's, it's just, let's get Cropsey. This is the way we can do it. He drinks, and uh, we'll surprise him while he's sleeping. We'll put this, uh, uh, we'll put this um, lighted uh, skull 
crawling with maggots uh, in his eyesight, and he'll freak out. He'll wake up and he'll absolutely freak out. Um, they did not originally, they didn't think that the, there was going to be an accident, that he was going to start to burn. Um, but that's what happened. There's going to be a fire lit across my shins. They had kind of a, uh, they had kind of a gas jet, big gas jet set up with a lot of, with a lot of uh, openings to it, a lot of apertures. And I register my surprise, first it's shock and then it's surprise and then it's fear. Ah, and then I start to scream. That was very good, Lou, very good. You know, and I'm screaming, screaming for a couple of minutes. Very good, Lou, let's do it again. And so I did it again, and I did it again, and I did it again. Uh, I got the feeling after a while that they just wanted to watch me scream, uh, which is cool. You know, I had nothing better to do at the time. Um, and by the time the end, by the time of the end of the shot, uh, my voice was uh, pretty far gone. Uh, but they got the screams that they wanted, evidently. Oh, by the way, um, they um, told me afterwards that they were getting a lot, that the police were. Uh, I don't know whether the police were on their way, but the police, the local police switchboard was being flooded with 911 calls because they heard somebody screaming terribly in the woods. They wanted people to investigate it. So I think if I would have kept on with it, uh, there would have been cops around pretty soon. If truth be told, I did not perform any of the murders. That was done mostly by Tom, I mean, with the effects. Um, and the, the signature logo for that was also performed by somebody else. They were very careful uh, to try to get somebody who had my silhouette uh, who closely resembled me, uh, but they didn't use me. They made a plaster mold of my face. In the meantime, Tom filled up the mold with more plaster, uh, and worked on it, and he added his little bits of uh, of whimsy, like maybe tooth hanging out, you know, <laughs> something along those lines. Maybe an eye coming out of the socket, you know, maybe something like that. <sighs> you know, <laughs> things that <laughs> things that uh, so. You know, make me look like Shirley Temple or somebody like that. I don't know. The flamethrower. I handled the flamethrower, but uh, I was shown how to how to hold it. And uh, if I had more time with it, I would have gotten fancier with it. You know, start drawing Z's in the air, like you know that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, that was pretty. Uh, the thing was pretty powerful. I I was a little ginger with it at first, but uh, you get you get used to it. The burning has gotten me more notoriety uh, than I thought. Uh, I would originally have. Um, would I do it again? Yes. Only the next time 
I don't want it to be after one day after my son was born that I have to leave him. Uh, and it won't be because my son is now uh, 31 years old and I don't expect any more.